Okay, hello, hello. Am I here? Yes, I'm here. Okay. <laughs> I got all these different screens going here. Wow, everybody's zooming in on me. Hello, hello. Uh, yes, it's Happy Eclipse Day, right? I don't even know, like, when it's going on. I'm so clueless. I've been just so busy and preoccupied with a, a couple of things over here. Hello, Lily. Uh, gosh, Diane is here. Belinda, hello. Watching the eclipse here. Like now, Belinda? I don't know. I don't know. Saskia. Uh, Nel Nelike. Uh, Michelle. Hi, Michelle. Sandra. Jacqueline. Robin. Angela. Katrina. Uh, listening today. Oh, it went so fast. I missed it. About the eclipse. Hoi hoi. I love that. Uh, it's in Texas right now, says Sandra. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I'm probably, it's, maybe it's going to happen. I think it's going to happen for us shortly. I don't know. I mean, it's very gradual. I don't, I don't, I think after the live is when I would see the most of it. Uh, hi, Jean uh, from Florida Panhandle. Kareen, hello from the Netherlands. Angelique. Hello, hello, Inga, golly, Carla, so fast, so fast. Okay, well, uh, it looks like we have a lot of people. Hello, Patricia. Um, yeah, I've been a little bit preoccupied. Just getting ready for the live is, you know, kind of a lot. And then, um, hey, Renee, hey, Ellen. Uh, my husband, Paul, gets kidney stones, and he got one this weekend, and he's still kind of going through it. And so, yeah, we went to the ER and the whole thing. <laughs> He's fine. I mean, if any of y'all ever get kidney stones or know anybody that does, it's just, it's miserable, but it won't kill you kind of thing. <laughs> Pretty bad. So we've been kind of dealing with that on and off. Um, Andy's getting ready to go to a hockey tournament, so maybe. We'll see. I don't think I love the idea of him traveling right now, but, you know, boys are going to do what they do. And if anybody remembers from uh, one of my videos from last year, his buddy Stephen is here again, like he was last year, and they're going down to the tournament together. And Stephen was in one of my videos as a blooper, and he's a riot. So they're having fun right now, having a little something to eat while I do this. Uh, yes, Anita, you're right. It's it's pretty brutal. <laughs> so before I forget, I do not want to forget that our winner, is this backwards or forwards? Our winner from last time is Sandy McQuaid. That's from last week's liking, commenting, and sharing. Uh, so Sandy, there it is in the comments right there uh, from Anya. She's our $50 gift certificate winner. Uh, I believe you have to uh, contact ECD, get with them to claim your prize. So congrats to Sandy. <laughs> also, my new release is officially here, like everywhere. It's on the Elizabeth Craft Designs website now, uh, of course, in your favorite stores, online or in person, uh, paper included, as I understand, because the paper was a little bit later than the rest of it, but I think everybody has everything now. So that's big, big news. Okay, so let's get to what we're going to do today. Yeah, don't forget. I mean, it's Monday, so it starts a new week. Like, comment, and share for next week's chance to win the gift certificate. Uh, Catherine purchased the Buy It All this morning. Sweet. Thank you, Catherine. I hope you enjoy it. Um, I'm having a lot of fun with it myself. <laughs> There's Susanna. Hi, Susanna. Yeah, like, comment, and share. Okay, I'm going to turn the camera around and... Um, Get off my stool. And we're going to make some artist trading coins today. So I have a lot of examples to show you. And uh, we're going to do a bunch of different techniques. I got that little pancake maker over there off to the side. Um, Naomi, my parcel finally got delivered. Tim Parents' house need to go pick it up. Yay! Yay, yay, yay. Okay, awesome. Wonderful. Um, I don't know, like you U.S. viewers, United States viewers like myself, um, 
Have we really heard much about artist trading coins before David's release? Uh, and I'm usually the last to know anything, so perhaps it's just me. But I had never really heard of them, I have to be honest. And then David came out with the dies, and I was like, wait, coins? Artist trading coins? I knew about the cards. <laughs> so, uh, super fun. I've been wanting to play with David's dies and mix it in with my stuff for quite a while. So we're finally going to get there today. Um, okay, cool. I'm watching the comments. All right, awesome. So, um, you know, I thought it was just like last month that I did this Facebook Live for Elizabeth Craft Designs, but I actually looked uh, right before I went live, and this was like four months ago, where I did ATCs with my older release, and I made this little uh, book with you guys um, from David's release as well. But of course, the coins fit in these little pockets perfectly. So if you're, you know, going to do a swap and traveling somewhere, you can bring your coins and your cards and swap and trade and collect right in your little journal. Um, yeah, so mostly it was all like the honeybee kind of stuff last time for me. So you can always go back, of course. Uh, to watch that if you like. I decorated the cover, but not on the live. I kind of talked about what went into it and the kind of problems that I had. If you want to see that, it's always super easy to find all the lives on the YouTube channel. So go back about four months if you want to check that one out. Okay, let me get that car that little coin back out of there before we get rolling. Did I read your DM from the other day about the cover? I did, Belinda, thank you. As it, you may have missed it at the beginning of this, but I was a little preoccupied <laughs> when that came through. So I was not able to answer you yet, I'm sorry. I, and you didn't really ask me, you were just sharing, but thank you, I did, I did see it. Um, you could add the coins to the card front, uh, absolutely. Uh, yep, yep, loving the coins. Uh, so I think the coin thing is, a little more of a uh, Europe thing, perhaps. Nobody, I don't see anyone saying like, no, I've heard of them forever. I'm looking back. Cards, yes, coins, not so much. I've heard of them, but just never did them before. I've never heard of them, only ATCs. Okay, well, cool. Uh, Michelle Makash says hers is being delivered today. Sweet, 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 awesome. Okay, and I know that Mary in uh, Florida, Wicked Papers, she's already been sharing on her little Facebook Live, so she has it for sure. Okay, so before I get rolling, because the very first one, I'm going to use a little bit of this uh, technique with some tissue and the jelly, jelly plate, but I've already done it because it's such a messy thing. Uh, I went ahead and made some gel prints, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, the jelly plate... Uh, is this rubbery mat thing. Uh, Jelly Arts is the company. It's See how it's a thick, rubbery, kind of spongy mat? And you, you know, you roll your paint on it, and then you press your paper in it, and you can get all different effects every time. So I've been playing around, again, I've got a video on, on gel printing alone. I did not too long ago. But I wanted to get these really cool, interesting um, color combinations and not super busy prints just to use in the background and show you how you can do that uh, on these coins. It's like a nice mixed media addition to your coin background. So you can see that was stamped on one side, um, actually stamped on this side and it soaked through because this is like a tissue paper. And then I did all these different layers, which is really not coming through very good on the camera as I can see it, but there's a lot of cool stuff happening here. So um, the one thing that I did find that I feel like it's worth mentioning, even though it's not an ECD product, is what they call wet strength tissue. If you are at all interested in doing this kind of thing and making collage papers for your mixed media, I would Google and try to find some wet strength tissue. I got this here in the States at joggles.com because they were talking about it on one of their YouTube videos. And they're right here in New Jersey in the States. So uh, I had to get it. And it's just, it's like tissue, but it's got like a smooth side and a tissue textury side. 
and I like to print on the smooth side usually. This one I noticed I did on the other side just to try it. But let me tell you, you can put so much paint and so much water and so much color on your jelly uh, plate and stick this on there and pull it up and it doesn't tear. Like you think about tissue paper, it would tear terribly. Uh, but it really is very strong. So I guess that's why they call it wet strength tissue. So I did that, played with that yesterday. And, you know, I was grabbing my die cuts that are just laying around extras from things that I've done. And I was laying those in the jelly press and uh, making all kinds of prints. And so that's kind of what we see here. Oh, gosh, can you even see that? See that very faint print there? And then here's the honeycomb from the bee. It's really hard to see, I can tell. But I am going to use that on my first coin. And I think I like this one with those kind of wave little rainbow things. So I would just adhere this straight to the piece of cardstock. I'm going to grab some net medium. Uh, what about using deli paper? Um, perhaps very similar, Belinda. I don't know. I just know that this comes in humongous sheets. I know the deli paper, generally, the ones I've seen, it comes in a box and you tear away like a, a square that's maybe 12 by 12 or 11 by 11. Uh, but this comes in really, really big sheets, just like tissue, like wrapping paper. And so you can get any size you want out of it. Oh, yes, that's that's working great, isn't it? <laughs> Did you see, I have the fan on in here, and uh, clearly it is drying this stuff up very quickly. So let me do that again. You could use glue stick. You could use a liquid glue. Yeah, this stuff wants to dry like fast. Okay, let's get that wrinkle out. And you can do it on top, of course, to seal it. So this is why I started with this one, because now I have to put this one aside and let it dry before we can die cut it or do anything. So I'm just going to go on to my second technique, ATC, and then come back to this one after that. Uh, let's see. Uh, do I have a Dutch name, perhaps, for the wet strength tissue? I wonder if you guys are talking amongst yourselves or to me. Uh, I don't know what it would be called there. Um... If anybody knows, like in the Netherlands, something that's an equivalent maybe or a name for the wet strength tissue, let me know or let them know. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside. We're going to make a cute little thing with that later once that dries. Uh, one thing we can do for this one, actually, we can do a few things for this one while this layer dries. So I'll stick this over here. Okay, got my little pancake maker over here. And you can see my table looks different today because uh, I am working on my nonstick craft sheet with all this inking and painting and stuff that we're doing today. Um, there's David. Hey, David. Uh, jelly, honestly, they use it in a similar way. Yeah, I have definitely used deli paper before. So if you can't get your hands on the wet strength tissue, then I think deli paper would work just fine. Okay, so I have die cut a butterfly from my layered butterfly set, of course. And we are going to do a fun little bit of embossing. So I've got my Versamark and I've got a couple of different powders here. I think I'm going to start with, I got a little rusty hinge. I got this copper mine funky fossil. And of course, my favorite is the Baked Texture by Seth Apner, um, Vintage Beeswax. So I'm going to do a little bit of layering here. And if you watched my video I had done on my own channel, you know that you can, you know, put this in your little pancake maker and then build up while it's in the pancake maker. Layers and layers. You just keep, keep adding stuff and it just keeps baking on there. 
So clearly I have stamped into this pad. Uh, we're going to see if that's going to work anyway. And I'm going to put some powder on here. This stuff is chunky and thick and cool. Okay, I'll throw that in there. Yeah, the beeswax is really cool. It just gives an age vintage look, just as if you've done like that, um, I think they call it a faux encaustic method. Like you've just done a glaze of old beeswax on top of it. Yeah, is it hard to find now? Yeah, I've had these, uh, I have a whole bunch of it actually that I got a long time ago when I did um, a class at one of my retreats in North Carolina. All right, let's check it. Okay, it's nice and cooked. Can you guys see it? All right, uh, get my little spoon and I'm gonna add a little more color here and there. So this is Rusty Hinge and this is embossing glaze. So this has got a translucency. It's not just gonna put down solid blobs over what we just did. It's gonna blend right in. So we'll do that. Emerald Creek. I think that, yeah, Belinda's answering David. Um, I think that that's what I had to do. At the time, I had a friend who was on the design team, so she kind of helped me get some. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm taking a little funky fossil copper mine here. Ooh, just a little. Just a little. Because this stuff, it's got copper in it. It's got blue in it. Very cool. Keep on cooking. Hello, Vilma. Um, you guys are helping each other out. I I see Heather doing a ooh. <laughs> uh, the last thing I want to put in here is this Wow Aquamarine, and it's uh, kind of a glittery blue. I mean, there's already some sparkles in there from that uh, copper mine that I just did, but oh, just a little blue glitter would be kind of fun. I know we all have pan many pancake makers now. We're all having a lot of fun with them. It's such a craze. I couldn't believe it when I saw one is still available on Amazon today. <laughs> yes, yeah, so cool. Am I the only one without the pancake? Yes, Rosalie, you are. You're the last one. That's it. The entire world has them. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, that's kind of cool. Do we like it? Do we need anything else? Can you see it? It's just kind of fun. All right. I'm gonna set that over there to dry. Uh, I'm going to change this out because when you do the sprinkling in your thing and add more layers, it does get on your little mat. So I have some extras over there at the ready. You have to scrape this off later. When it cools, it's easy to clean. All right, and then I die cut Happy from one of my papers in the Harmonious Hodgepodge. And I want to emboss that as well, believe it or not. So I'm gonna get that all. It's probably gonna get ink on it too, but as we saw with the butterfly, it didn't affect anything because it kind of covered it up. Okay, I have all these little pieces of paper, little quarter sheets of paper ready for this. Okay, this will be that same blue with the copper. Oh, Lois is the only other person in the world. I'm sorry. Rosalie, you're not alone. <laughs> Lois doesn't have one either. Oh, no, now everybody's coming out of the woodwork saying how they don't have it yet. <laughs> All right, what are y'all waiting for? You see how much fun we're having with it? It's so much easier than using the embossing gun. All right, I'm going to stick that in there for a second. All these people that don't have one. Second pancake, well, one is enough, right? Uh, <laughs> Femca, no, two would be great, right? I think a bigger one would be nice. I don't know why you'd have to have two unless you wanted to actually make pancakes in one. 
Okay, let's see how that did. It doesn't take long. That embossing powder is so pretty, that copper mine. But I want I want it to be a little more blue. Just blue. Do I have some more blue here? I got all kinds of stuff over here. Maybe just a little of that. All right, so I am going to take that out because I don't want all the, the cracks and crevices in between the letters to fill in with the embossing powder. So hopefully it's still warm enough to do this. I'm going to dump a little of this speckled egg. Is that what this is? Yeah, speckled egg, distress, emboss, glaze. Because it was just a little too coppery, I want a little more blue to that. I'm going to try not to go over time like I did last time. I'm looking at everybody saying how they don't have one yet. Yeah, we need an on-off switch. I agree with that, Sandra. That would be handy. I mean, you have the light, but sometimes I'm not paying attention and I walk away and I come back later and like, uh-oh, I left that on. So that's not terribly safe. Okay, there's a little more blue to that now. That's good. All right, I'm going to stick that over there, and we're going to check on our little piece here. It's still a little tacky, so I'm not going to rush it. We're just going to we're going to keep moving, which means that we're going to go on to the second design I wanted to show you, and we're just going to really let this take its time drying. It's almost there. I could probably use a heat gun, but, you know, i got plenty of samples over here we can use. So I wanted to do something like, like this one again, but not the same. So I have a different girl. Uh, it's going to be more like this. And if you watched my recent video I did not too long ago, um, I kind of showed some junk journal stuff. And then I showed this wonderful old yearbook with these pictures of these gals from 1931. And so I scanned them and I made them small and I put a sepia filter on them and all that good stuff. And I've been using them in my projects. So I fussy cut out my little lady here, and I die cut and stamped one of my little half butterflies. And then I did a partial stamping of, you know, this pretty floral, floral kind of stamp from the Love and Roses stamp set, which is right here, ready to go, because I want to stamp a little bit more on my coin. So here's my paper, of course, uh, die cut with David's coin die. This is the one with the stitch. And then this is the one that's a little bit bigger. And that's how I've been doing all of my, my coins. I mount them on a the piece of cardstock just to kind of frame them out. It's very slight around the edge, but that gives it a lot more body. And then of course you can stamp on the back with your, um, you know, your little signature from David's stamp set that gives your name and all the details of your ATC. Okay, so I'm going to stamp this out. I think I'm just going to use some black. Thank you, Jean. I'm glad you like the papers very much. Very different. Okay, this is just Versafine black ink. And I'm just going to just do a whole background of it back here. I don't think I need the stamp platform. Nope, that did just fine. Um, Joanne, that's a great idea. I do too, but <laughs> so Joanne just said she plugs all of her, you know, devices and things into one power strip and then unplugs it every night, the whole power strip plug every night so she doesn't forget anything. And that's a great idea. My problem with that is that my main plug is behind my desk over there. So I can't really do that. Okay, so what I'm going to do with this guy is I have an embossing pen. I got these Ranger emboss, Distress embossing pens. One is a brush tip. One is a, like, bullet. Uh, I don't know if you all have used these before. I'm kind of new to them. So what you can do is kind of really isolate small areas. And I'm going to make this a little bit shorter so you can put it into the pancake maker. Uh, you can isolate really small areas that you want to emboss. So 
like we want to color in the rose, let's say, I'm going to use the brush. You, oh, I might use the bullet. It's, there's some small little spaces in there. So to get in those really tight little spaces, you can use this pen. I don't know how quickly you have to work, but I kind of move quickly. And then I'm going to use the glazes so it's not like a real solid opaque coverage. You know, you have that nice transparency. So I'm just going to do that. And then I'm going to use a different color on a leaf. So let me do one. Let me do one at a time just in case. I've got tattered rose here. Okay, cool. So it just takes where you went with the pen. And so if you missed any places, it's going to miss it too. <laughs> but it's not too bad. I'm fine with that. All right. And then I will do with peeled paint, I'll just do like this leaf right here. And then maybe kind of like these areas and this stem. Okay. No paint. Wooden drink stirs, pink spins. What are y'all talking about? <laughs> uh, need pens, may need those. Yeah. Okay. So let's see. If I overlap what I've already put powder on, oh, it's all good. Okay, cool. All right, I'm going to throw that in my pancake maker. I need a liner. Uh, it's off screen now, kind of, but I'll show you. And then graduate of Cadillac Cardiac Rehab. Oh, Penny, congrats. Yay. I don't know what y'all are talking about with the drink skewers, but I'll look at it later. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it doesn't take long. Okay, so that's kind of pretty, right? We'll emboss, no color. And I don't need any of that other stuff, so that's all I wanted embossed. And let's see, should we do a little embossing on the butterfly as well, or do we want to do like glitter? Maybe I'll use my glitter pen for that. If I can find it. Okay. Yeah. So this guy I used the last time. Just going to color in the wing area, the open areas. Coffee stirs. Yeah, I know. For embossing powders, like to pick it up. Is that what y'all are talking about? I know that you can um, sprinkle the powders, like when I did the butterfly in there, uh, you can sprinkle the powders and then stir it with a little stick and make it move. But sometimes I just like to let it do what it's going to do instead of pushing it around. But it does give it a nice swirly look. Like this uh, bee that I did a couple weeks ago in my video. I, that's where I kind of pushed and swirled the colors around with a stick. So you can definitely do that. Okay. Got our wing. We got our girl. We got this. We have to fussy cut this. Uh, yeah, the little Nuvo scoop is great, isn't it, David? Drink skewers instead of that scoopy thing. Oh, drink skewers instead of this? Do they have a spoon on the end? <laughs> I don't know. All right, so what we're going to do is mostly fussy cut this out. I'm not going to go terribly fussy because we have a background that will camouflage this. Yeah, the little spoon. I, I also use this one. It's more like a shovel, but the spoon end I think I use the most. It's pretty handy.
And did everybody see that uh, Els and David and Lizana and Jacqueline? Who else was there? Uh, Esther? I'm thinking Esther must have been there. They were all hanging out together in the Netherlands. Were they at Duoding? Is that where that was? I saw a lovely picture. They looked like they were having a great time. Okay, that's cool. That's ready. Uh, just those little bit of uh, white areas that I didn't get close enough with, I will ink with Vintage Photo. Esther wasn't. Rihanna was there. That's who it was. Okay, so sorry, Rihanna. That was fun. Was it Duoding? No, Hobby Vision. Okay. Thank you for keeping me straight, brother. <laughs> what would I do without you? Okay. All right, so we've got this guy, and we've got to ink this as well. Okay, and before I glue anything on, you know, this onto here, I want to do all my layering, things that hang off, of course, that you want to trim. And so this is just a little leftover square of the travel, I think, dictionary term from my travel and postage stamp set. And it's just a little scrap left over from when I did create and craft. So I thought, well, we'll just kind of use that since I have it. And I just want to maybe tear it at the bottom because why not? Old baby spoon. Yeah, little little tiny baby spoon. Um, that'd be great. I think I'll tear the top too. Why not? Um, yeah, if you um have ever heard of Daiso, that's a Japanese like dollar store, but they have some, just a few in the States. Uh, and I happened to go to one in the Seattle, downtown Seattle, years ago. And they had little sets of spoons and forks, like miniatures. And, um, you know, obviously for maybe snacking or children maybe, or just parties, you know, for little foods. Uh, but I bought them and I was using my little spoon for a long time for that purpose. Okay, so we're gonna put uh, wings on our lady and so I picked her because she's turned sideways a little bit. So that was kind of perfect. So that's going to go there. So I'll kind of keep her there. She's sort of in the middle. She's going to be holding the flower we just did. Thank you. I love the I love any dictionary kind of stamp. Obviously, they've shown up three times now in my collections. Uh, they're just so handy for backgrounds and little treatments like this. All right, so with her in place, we're going to give her her wings. She's so sweet. Okay, and then we'll glue her down. I forget this one's name. <laughs> I was talking about their names last time in my personal YouTube video I did. All right, just so I don't stick to the table here or to the paper. I'll stick her down like so. Cute. <laughs> yes, isn't she cute? She's so cute. And she's a real person. Okay, and then I did a few little die cuts of my uh, borders and trims. I love this little zigzaggy one because it just reminds me of actual stitching like on a sewing machine. Um, so we want to maybe add a little bit of that along the right side here. And I picked black because my my backing circle is going to be black as well. So I'm going to stick that there. And I think I'll do another piece just next to it here. Yes, continue to like, comment, and share. Because Sandy was the lucky one and won the $50 from last week just from liking, commenting, and sharing. 
All right, so I'm going to sort of line up with the one that's on there already. Lovely. So now we have that. Give that a second. Uh, we could put this down. See, she's going to hold this little rose right there. It's not little. It's ginormous compared to her, but that's what makes it fun. We don't have to worry about perfect scale when we're doing art, right? We don't care. Okay. Cute. What adhesive am I using, asked Gail. This is, it's art glitter glue that I have put into my Nuvo bottle in my um, precision glue press from My Sweet Petunia. Love it. Susan says she can't wait to get her hands on my new release. Yay! Well, it's out, it's there, it's available. So I hope you get some soon. And Susan says, and now I have to make coins. That's kind of what my some of my <laughs> my gals in the design team I posted this in our little private group. And I think it was Lizana that said, oh, now we have to make these. <laughs> sorry, not sorry, as they say, right? Okay, so I just trimmed all that away. Uh, I should have inked around my butterfly before I put it on there. So I'm just going to hit it with a little bit of ink now. It's all good. That's better. Just because everything else is inked, we should, right? Okay, so we'll just get this on here, and then we'll go back to that first one. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty pretty great tool. I do love it, especially for doing lives. I mean, I use it to craft every day, too, but um, when I'm doing lives and creating craft, you know, you don't want to have to put your bottle down and find the pin and stick it back in there. You just put this guy in the holster, and it's fantastic. Okay. She's done. Isn't she cute? <laughs> I love that. Okay, so let's go back to the first one. Let me do a little clean up here. Uh, thanks, Renee. I'm so happy to hear that. Uh, it's funny when you first, like if you get the, this coin die from David and you die cut it out, you're like, oh my Lord, it's so small. What am I going to do in this little tiny space? Uh, but, you, you know, you just stick with it and you find that it's actually quite fun. Okay. Back to this guy. It is good and dry, ready to die cut. So I'm just going to trim off all this extra. And of course, I will save that. And we're going to do something similar to this one. Very, very simple this time. Uh, let's see, we need some ink. We need the dye, of course. We got our backing and some embossing. Uh, no, we did our embossing. So we're set to go. So I'll get this die cut out. Now that this is on the cardstock, I think you can see the pattern so much better, right? Rather than me holding it in my hand. That's just me pressing my die cut scraps into the jelly press, jelly plate. Teresa says she actually thinks small things are easier to decorate. Yeah, I thought ATCs were small and then I got to going on them and I was like, oh no, there's all kinds of space here to create. This is awesome. Um, so yeah, you just, it's sort of like a fun challenge. And then you surprise yourself like with all that you can do in that small space. Okay, so this is Verse Fine Claire Warm Breeze because, you know, we did a little bit of that kind of bluish turquoisey color in the embossing. So that's what I'm going to use here for my stamp. Again, I'm going to use this rose stamp for my background. And we'll just go right off the edge like before. You could use the dictionary, you could use whatever you want, those flourish swirls. Um, 
which I think we're going to use. So I won't, I won't use those yet, but that's pretty on that tissue. It might take just a little bit longer to dry because it's on tissue, but it will dry. I'll probably have to heat set that. Yeah, uh, you find that you're, yeah, you're pulling out more small things when you're working on these coins, smaller dies, smaller stamps, for sure. All right, we can be done with that and that. And I'm going to heat set this a little bit because I don't want to rush it. I like the comment about, uh, who was it that said, <laughs> Sylvia said, they started as a 12 by 12 scrapbooker and it seems that crafts are getting smaller and smaller. And then Margaret said, just like many of us, <laughs> we're all shrinking, me included. Okay, a little ink. I think I'm gonna use a little darker. I've got a little, what is it, scorched timber remnants on this one. I don't want it to be too dark. Okay, so we'll get this on here. How am I doing? Oh my goodness. Time flies, man. When you're having fun, though. Okay, my little background circle is that same kind of teal blue. I think we all were 12 by 12 scrapbookers, Honora. <laughs> At one point, I think that's kind of how we all started off, right? Okay, and then this would go here. And you know that if you weren't happy with that and you wanted it to be more orange or more something, because I'm looking at my other one and it's not quite as deep, you could throw that back into the pancake maker. You definitely could, but for sake of time, I'm gonna skip it, okay? And you could put more ink, you could layer it all up. All you have to do is reheat what's on there. And then my happy would go on last. <laughs> what are y'all saying where David said, careful, mom is watching? Shorter and wider. <laughs> Oh my gosh, was that Dee that said that? She's so tiny. Okay, and then perhaps on an angle. So that, that will take a minute. Yeah, you see it hop right off of there. It will glue, but it will take a minute because it's embossed on, um, on embossed. So there's two slick surfaces. So I'll just show you that one, but that's basically what I've done here. Everything's just a little bit lighter on this one but it's still kind of fun. Okay, let's put that aside. Now we're gonna do something a little bit more masculine. We've got the flourishes there, I've got some things here. I've got a butterfly from my paper collection that I have glued some wire antenna to, just some craft wire twisted around and I put it on there. You know, because oftentimes with uh, ATCs, it's about, you know, mixed media, mixing, matching, combining things. So we're going to emboss a little bit on this piece here. Grab another piece of paper. And I think that we'll just do a little clear embossing this time. I think I'll check this. Okay. Yeah, I think that I pushed something in there that was stamped yesterday. So it's kind of transferring. 
Okay, so this is my little flourish from, this is from the Love and Roses, I think, stamp set. <laughs> you guys tell me. Now y'all are talking about pancakes. Okay, clear emboss, that's good. I wanna do a little bit of this smaller flourish too. Just really quick, maybe a little there. And over here, you can hardly see it. You have to be right at the right angle. Okay, cool. And what color? Well, I like that blue. I think I'll do that again, maybe. No, I'm going to use this. Why not? Frosted Crystal Translucent Embossing Powder. I see the blue over there now, but let's do this. So this gives a little crystallized background, embossed, almost sort of matte. It's not super de duper glossy. It's kind of interesting. I believe Rihanna has used this before, or perhaps it was Lizana. So many people doing so many cool things, it's hard to keep track. And now we're talking about what we like on our pancakes. Um, D is watching the eclipse now. We should peak in a few minutes at 95% in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yeah, so it's going to be delayed here from that. So I might still get a chance to see it. Cool. Although I have no way to view it. I don't have the fancy glasses. Um, but do you guys know that trick with the kitchen strainer? If you don't, I will tell you. <laughs> You can take a kitchen strainer outside and don't look up at the sun, hold it over the ground somewhere where you can see its reflection and it reflects the sun and the eclipse through all the holes in your kitchen strainer onto the ground. So as, it, as the eclipse goes, the holes that you're seeing, the circles on the ground become little half moons, slivers, and then gone, and then it comes back again. It's pretty cool. I learned that trick a long time ago when my daughter was little. So what I'm doing here is just playing around with a little idea of taking part of a die cut from one of the fancy cutaways. I've got all these extras over here. And I just cut away inside parts to make little borders, little fun borders. And has anybody discovered this that has this die? that if you layer these up, you get this cute little alternating. Of course, you'd want to use more contrasty colors than this, but you have this cute little alternating colored border. But I'm just gonna do about three of these on here. And I'll kind of alternate how they lay. Big circle, little circle. Egyptian turquoise embossing powder. Ooh, that sounds fun. I don't have that. Uh, who makes that? Can we uh, share that information? I'm curious. I tell you, ever since I got this pancake maker, I have accumulated and purchased more new embossing oop, embossing powders. I didn't really have many before because I never really did much embossing after a while. But now it's made its resurgence. I'm doing a lot more of it. So I'm always looking for new fun stuff. Okay, that's kind of fun. Just something different. You got your little background in there and that crystally emboss. And then you've got your little borders. This one's going to be very simple and quick. And we can get this on now. Uh, I'm looking to see, did she answer? Uh, I never had any of the basics in front of me. 
<laughs> oh, by wow. Okay. Yeah, I just have to look into... Maybe I have that one. I didn't think I did, though. Okay. Uh, does it matter? No. We'll do it this way. Okay. And then I was just going to pop my butterfly up there, and then I stamped out uh, original from the dingbats and phrases, and then die cut from uh, one of the ribbons in my circles, banners, and ribbons die. I want to pop these up, both of these up, I think. I thought that David used that because it sounded familiar. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Yes. Beautiful. So I'm going to pop both of these up. And before I commit, I'm going to put this here like so. Wow, has many powders. Um, they're, they're pretty nice, Femka. Really nice. Um, lots of very nice choices. It seems like this should be closer to original, but I'm going to put it up here. And then you could always go in here later and put like a little gem or something cool in the little openings in the holes, but there's another one. Okay, I've got a really fun one I can't wait to share. Do I have time? Uh, yes, I have two more. We'll see if we have time for two more. I doubt it. <laughs> okay, I want to do something like this one, but maybe a little different, just to show you how cool. So I've got a lot of things prepped and ready this time, so we can maybe get through it. I got my main circle. I got some markers. I have Let's Go. And I've already done this stamping for that, but I'm going to try something. Okay, so I have my travel dictionary term. I'm looking for that big block. Okay, we'll just get that ready because we've got to do some fun stuff like mixed media stuff to this. This is just heavyweight off white cardstock. Okay, and then we've got some goodies. I'm going to use a little bit of Distress Spray Stains. I really haven't used much of these lately. I have so many. That's just a little bit of ground espresso. Rusty Hinge. And then I have some micas here. I'll wait on those. Okay, so we got a little puddle going. And we're just going to mush it like so, right? Cool. If it's too dark for your liking, you can dab some off. That's a little bit hard right there. Oh, I just love it. Love it, love it. A little more orange. Uh, a little more blue. Where's the blue? I want a little more blue. This is faded jeans. This is how old mine are. Some of mine are in bottles from before the actual bottles. And I put my own labels. Anybody else do that? Ooh, look at that. Woohoo! Okay, we'll clean this up. Gotta love my shop rag here. Heat set that. We can do a little of this. Yeah, it reminds me of the eclipse too. I was just thinking that. <laughs> Like the moon, the earth, something from afar. Okay. And then mica, antique bronze. 
I don't know if I'm supposed to shake it. I think I am. Does it say? Shake well. One of mine doesn't make a noise. Like the ball is stuck. It just won't make the noise. But it still works. Okay, so I'm just going to do a little of this. Wee! That was a lot. That's okay. Come back here. Come back here. I'm trying to do two things at once. I don't want to cook the mica onto my mat. Okay, I think that's pretty dry. Cool. All right, now we'll stand. Our dictionary. What color? Black. It really needs to be black, I believe, for it to show up. You could do this in your platform if you were afraid, but I feel like, you know, mixed media is not, it's not perfect. So even if I get like a partial stamping, I don't care. Ooh, awesome. Look at it. That's fun. Keep that a little bit. All right, we'll set that aside for a moment. And then I've got, I've already colored this. I've got it on a little postage stamp, of course. And I'm going to give it a little bit of inking. little vintage photo. We're only going to use part of it, of course, because otherwise it would cover up our entire coin. And then I also love to use a little darker, the scorched timber, just on those outside edges. Like that. Okay, so again, we don't want to put it on the back because we've got stuff coming. Let's ink this while we're at it. Let's go. My other one says Ahoy. Ooh, that is dark. Okay, a little bit much. You can kind of blend that down if it's too much. Okay, so that's done. And this was stamped on craft cardstock. And then, as you can see, I used one of the circles from my circles banners and ribbons to cut it out. So yes, I cut off north, south, east, west, but still cool, I think. I think my vintage photo is getting very dry. Doesn't seem to be doing hardly anything. Okay, so what I would do here is Take this guy, and maybe this is going to come in most of the way. No, two thirds of the way. Over here. But before I press too hard, we're going to get this guy underneath a little bit. Maybe down here. And then also, let's get Let's Go under there. Before it's too late. Oh, no, that's not going to work at all, is it? <laughs> Get it under there. Really me. Let's do it on top. Let's do it right on top. Okay. Now, I had these guys. These are those chains, you know, from the borders and trims. And I sprayed these with uh, that mica spray to make them all coppery. I uh, don't know if I have a lot of room for these guys now. Ooh, that would look good, maybe kind of like right there. Uh, the last one I did them top and bottom because I had some room to do so. But I think we'll just go like right in the middle there. Okay, it's three o'clock. You have to go, I understand. Uh, let's see, let's make it go a little further past. Who's still with me? Ah, <laughs> quite a few of you still here. 
We're only seeing about 56% eclipse in Titusville, Barbara. Oh, okay. I keep looking outside. It does look a little weird outside. I have my blinds almost all the way closed, but I can see that things look and feel a little different as I look out there. Now see this one, this might be my favorite. I mean, I like girly and sweet and pretty and pink, but I just really love grunge and, and guy stuff. I think that's what motivated me to include some a little more masculine things in my paper and my stamp. I just, I love it. So there's that. So if you're still here, hey Tiff, still looks really cool. Um, so if you're here and you want to vote, which one do you like best? Left or right? Left or right? I'm just curious. I have a favorite. Okay, I'm not going to do the last one, but I will show you what I was going to do, and then I'll post a picture of it uh, in the group. And then this is probably another one of my favorite ones. So... <laughs> I got the idea that we could use some fabric. And I got all these extra doodads here. So I had a bunch of, you know, I always go to my stash. I don't go buying out new things, usually. <laughs> and I had some of this Tim Holtz, like, uh, ideology substrate stuff. And I, I threw away all the other stuff or sold it or whatever. But I kept, like, these linen ones. This one looks like jeans. This looks like linen. They're adhesive backed. I have tons of this. So... No, it doesn't really die cut perfectly, but it does most of the job, and then you have to use your scissors. But there's that jean circle. And I have I was gonna put that on here. And I have some cheesecloth, and I have a little layered lighthouse, and I was gonna punch a hole in the top and then attach this little ahoy chain and put an eyelet in the top of this. And I also have a couple of little stamps. So I'm gonna work on that. I'm gonna say goodbye and then I will post a picture. I even have a little starfish here somewhere and a teeny tiny little shell I might glue <laughs> onto this one just because it's fun, super fun. All right, let me turn this camera around here and say my goodbyes. Sorry, I went long again. That's my thing, I guess. I'm uh, I'm late, I'm always late. Um. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. Of course, having great fun. Uh, I don't know who's going to be here Wednesday and Friday. Otherwise I would tell you, but, um, you know, just watch the Facebook page. You'll find out. Okay. So thanks again and see you next time. Take care.